welcome to almost the last ITS seminar of the quarter. Um, there will be one more next week because next week is TTP Recruiting Day and I'm doing a seminar. So, love to have an audience for that. Uh, and then today, I uh, hear is Recruiting Day for the Transportation Engineering Program. So, welcome to all of you prospective students uh, who are here for that. Uh, today is a special edition of the um, usual ITS Friday seminar. Uh, once a year, we honor the recipient of the Ryuichi Kitamura Prize, which is it, it's an award that's given out by the Transportation Research Board um, for a paper published uh, sort of within the realm of travel behavior. Uh, I forget exactly which committee is giving it out now, um, but a certain a certain segment of the Transportation Research Board um, for the best paper written to, uh, by within this area by a um, faculty member with their student, and the award honors Ryuichi Kimura, who was a faculty member here at UC Davis, one of the first of our transportation engineering faculty way back when, when Vance Ehrlich was a fresh PhD student, so that was a long time ago. And so uh, he's one of the founding members of the program here and of ITS. And he was a very special person. He's really the, uh, I think of him as the, well, maybe godfather isn't quite the right word, grandfather of the travel behavior field. He, um, he really pioneered research on travel behavior and um, put forth some really important ideas about how we can think about and study travel behavior. Um, so he was, he's, he was very important to the field, um, but he was also um, an amazing mentor to the students. So if you meet uh, his former PhD students, um, you know, they just, yeah, he, he, so much better than the rest of us. You know, <laughs> to shame my piddly efforts to, to be a good mentor to my students. I mean, he was just amazing. So um, he left UC Davis before he finished his career to go back to his native Japan. Um, and then after he passed away, this award was created in his honor. Um, and so uh, the committee selects this award-winning paper of a student uh, and their faculty member together and then and there's a nice check that goes along with that as well as a certificate um, and then a part of the award is that uh, we invite the, the student but not the faculty member uh, to come to UC Davis to present their work so um, Rong Chen Chen is here today from the University of Minnesota uh, he and his advisor, Michael Levin, are the winners of the award um, for their paper that was just over a year ago, and he received the certificate at the TRB meeting this year, and then we brought him to campus today uh, to share with us his research. So I'm looking forward to hearing his talk, and please join me in welcoming Rob Chen. This introduction, and it's my, it's a great honor to be here and present my work with my advisor Mike Lev. Um, this work we submit we finished in 2018 and submitted to the TRB annual meeting in 2019. So the topic of this study is a dynamic user equation of mobility on demand system with linear programming rebalancing strategy. It is a, a model-based study. First, I will introduce the background. With advances of the autonomous uh, driving technologies, there are many technologies and algorithms proposed to use uh, autonomous vehicles in the traffic network to improve the safety and efficiency of the network. So first, there are two applications I will briefly introduce to you. The first application is the signal free intersection. So there's one algorithm called autonomous intersection management. In autonomous intersection management, 
vehicle approaching an intersection will send its location and speed information to the center controller at the intersection. And then the center controller will calculate the optimal trajectory for the vehicles. Following the optimal uh, trajectory, the vehicle can pass the intersection safely and efficiently. And this video is uh, created by my lab mate Jack Olsen two years ago. And the second application is dynamic lane reversal. And this is not a very new idea. That's just the lane, the part of the freeway with busy traffic will borrow some lane from the part of the freeway with uh, traffic, with few traffic. And it's very, it's not easy to implement this dynamic lane reversal for personal vehicles because if a person is not well informed of the lane reversal information, accidents will happen. So with the help of autonomous vehicles, we can easily implement dynamic lane reversal because AV always follows the instructions. Okay, so my study I will present today will not relate to the pre uh, previous two applications. So I will introduce the other application of autonomous vehicles, the autonomous mobility on demand system. So here I cite the definition from Professor uh, Marco Pavon. Uh, he defined the mobility on demand system as, uh, as a one-way vehicle sharing system using small size of vehicle and electric cars. So you can see the small size of vehicle can be the size of a car to go cars. And here I would like to clarify the difference between one-way and two-way car sharing. And one-way car sharing, they allow the users to keep the car and drop the car at different places. But two-way car sharing, they require the user to pick the car and return the car at the same places. However, one-way car sharing company need to pay much more to rebalance their vehicle. They need to carry their vehicle to bring it back to its original places. But with the help of autonomous vehicles, they can drive back according to the instruction for the company itself. So that's the advantages of using autonomous vehicle in the mobility on demand system. <clears throat> and there are some advantages of mobility on demand system. And the first one, it can reduce the car ownership because, uh, because it's very convenient for users to go to a station and get in the car and that car to bring them to the destination. So if the cost of the mobility on demand system is not that large, people will prefer the mobility on demand system over buying a new car themselves. So it's reduced the car ownership. And most of the time, when people use personal vehicle, they only use it in the morning or afternoon peak hour. They drive their car to the working places, and then the vehicle is parked in the parking lot most of the time of the day. But in mobility on demand system, cars are shared by several people. So which, increase, which increases the utilization of the car. So with the reduction in car ownership and an increase in car utilization, uh, the total space need for parking is, uh, is reduced. However, there are some challenges in mobility on demand systems. It needs to serve unbalanced demand in the city. For example, you can never find a city with totally balanced demand. That means one half of the city has totally the same demand as other half of the city. Because the mobility on demand system needs to serve a city with unbalanced demand, so they need to produce more trips. They need to use empty vehicles to go somewhere to pick the waiting, the, uh, waiting passengers. So I have mentioned that mobility on demand system can reduce the car ownership, but at the same time, it will increase the increase more trips. So it's unknown for us now if using the mobility system can mitigate or make the traffic congestion more severe. So it comes to the motivation of this study. So we want to model the congestion effect of the autonomous mobility on demand system 
when all demands in a city are served by the mobility on demand system using the traffic assignment. So as you know, traffic assignment is the last step in the four-step method. Traffic planners and traffic engineers usually use four-step method to evaluate the effect of a traffic policy. So the output of the four-step uh, method is the travel time and traffic volume on every link, which is also the output of the traffic sign. Because in this study, we assume all demand is served by the mobility on demand system. So there's no more choice in this model. And we focus on predict two types of trips. One trip is the serving trip. The second type of trip is the rebalancing trip. A serving trip is the trip with passengers, and rebalancing trips are trip without passengers. And we model two types of traffic assignment. A simpler version is called static, static traffic assignment. So it's called the static because it assumes a stat, static state condition. And the performance of the link is based on the link performance function. And we usually use the DPR function. This function is the monitor increasing function with respect to the link flow. However, there are some problems with the static traffic assignment. It's not very realistic. So our ultimate goal is to model the dynamic traffic assignment. This, tra this type of traffic assignment is able to track changes in congestion in a fine resolution. So the res resolution can be several seconds or several minutes. Okay, next I, will, I want to show you how the rebalancing chips is generated. I will give you a very simple example. So first, this table shows the initial condition of the network. So there are four stations, one, two, three, four. And each station, there is a parking vehicle. And for station one, there are three passengers. They want to go from station one to station two. Similarly, at station two, one passenger, one traveler wants to go to station one. And there are two passengers at two passengers at station three and four. They want to go to station four and three respectively. So the first step, the mobility from demand system, they will, each vehicle will pick one passenger and send them to the destination. So it becomes this. You can see they change their locations. And after that, the next, there are three locations where parking vehicle are accompanied by a waiting, uh, uh, waiting travelers. So the next step, each vehicle where there, is, where there is the traveler, they will pick a traveler sent to the next station. So finally, you will find this condition. So station two, three, four, they have available empty parking vehicles, but there is still one waiting pedestrian, a waiting traveler at station one. So what we can do is we need to send one empty vehicle from station two, three, four, and go to pick these travelers. In this case, a rebalancing trip is generated. So it's generated because an empty vehicle is going to pick, pick the waiting uh, traveler. So in this study, we focus on guess the traffic assignment result for the network. We want to know how does the serving trips and the rebalancing, rebalancing trips distribute on the network? So the traffic assignment usually focus, usually follows two rules when the network becomes stable. Uh, I think you may all know these two types of rules. One is user equilibrium and one is the system optimal. And in user equilibrium, no traveler can improve the travel times by uni unilaterally change their routes. When the user equilibrium is reached, all used paths will have the same travel time, or that path will not have any users. And another type of traffic assignment rule is the system optimal. So different from user equilibrium, when every traveler is selfish and try to minimize the travel time. In system optimal, all travelers try to minimize the total system travel time rather than their own. So this rule is not 
normal in real life because if there's no control over the travelers, because no one wants to act to minimize the maximize the benefit for the system. They only care about their own benefits. So, but there are some application to re, to push the traffic segment toward the system optimal, such as the tolling lane, so tolling road. And but now we are considering a system full of autonomous vehicles. So, what we can do is the company can push the traffic segment towards the system optimal because they can control the movement of every cars. So. Now the key point is, what the system will be if the whole network is served by a mobility on demand system? First, we assume that if there is only one car sharing company that control all AVs in the city. And in this case, for example, several years ago, there will be only one company, Uber, serving all demand in the city. And Uber will try to minimize the total cost when we operate the system. So the worst case will be you and your friend, you go to the same destination, but you don't share a car. You call two cars and you depart at the same time. But finally, you find your friend arrive at the destination much earlier than you. So that's very annoying. <laughs> so if we assume that, so that's the worst case, if you assume that um, this company is kind, they allow their vehicle with the passenger pick the shortest path. That means if the vehicle has a passenger, they will send this passenger to the destination as soon as possible. Then what will this company do to its rebalancing trips? They will try to minimize the cost for their rebalancing trips for the empty vehicles. So that means a traveler may wait at the place for a long time because if the company only cares about their rebalancing cost. In this study, we assume there are multiple competing car sharing companies in the city, just like what we have now. So I think it's not very normal to have only one car sharing company serving the whole demand in the city. So we assume there are multiple company, competing car sharing companies. And in this case, there's no doubt that the vehicle with the passenger will follow the shortest path because they want to send the passenger to their destination as soon as possible. Also, for the rebalancing trips, they will also follow the shortest path because they want the, the waiting passenger to get on the vehicle as soon as possible because there is another company complete, competing with them. If they are late, the, the traveler will shift to another company. So in this study, we assume that every vehicle, every trip follow the shortest path. So that leads to the user equilibrium. So the target of this study is to model the result of the traffic assignment of a network with mobility on demand system under the user equilibrium. And the contribution of study it, of this study is we formulate linear program of traffic assignment for mobility of demand system. And we propose this an algorithm to calculate the rebalancing vehicles. And we use agent based simulation to solve dynamic traffic assignment. Now it's methodology. There will be more maths, I think. Um, <laughs> here is our network model. So I, this is simply the notation. Here we have large traffic network G, and this traffic network has a node set N and the link set A. And some nodes are served as traffic zone because they are the origin or destination of a chip. So it's denoted by Z. And we also have a path set because for our origin destination pair, there may be several paths connecting the same pair of all origin destination. So we use paths that to include all of these paths. And the link is denoted by a pair of nodes. And X is a link flow, pass, pass flow is F. Link trail time is T, and link pass relation is denoted by delta. When IJ, the so link IJ is on pass pi, delta is one, otherwise it's zero. And traffic demand is D. And we use P and A to represent the number of parking vehicles 
at the beginning and at the end of uh, analysis period. So, because we will formulate a convex optimization model, so here are two most important constraints used to calculate the number of rebalancing trips. So we think no matter the rebalancing trips or the serving trips, they will follow the conservation law of the flow at every node. So this constraint is for node R. It tells us that the total incoming flow towards the node should be equals to the total flow going out of the node. So the first term is the summation of FRS. That's the total flow going out of node R. And P is the number of parking vehicles at the beginning of the analysis period. And FQR, the summation of FQR, is the total number of flow coming towards the node. And A is the number of parking vehicles at the end of the uh, at the end of the analysis period. And we also uh, uh, we also make a constraint for the total flow connecting an origin destination pair and the serving trips. So the total trips connecting an origin and destination pair should be larger than the serving trips number. So here is a very simple example. I borrowed the example from last slide. So now B12 is three because there are three, B, three travelers from station one to station two. B21 is one. And P1 is one because there is the initially there's one parking vehicles. And A1 is zero because we know in the end there will no there will be no vehicle parking at station one. And then we can guess F12, the flow from station one to two should be larger than its serving trips, which is three. So F1 to larger than three, larger or equal than three, equal to three. And F21, we use the first equation. We get F21 larger or equal to two. And then B21, the serving trip from node two to node one is one. So we get there should be at least a one rebalancing trip from node two to node one, that is one. So we know Location one needs at least a one relate rebalancing trip. And when the demand is symmetrically distributed, there's no need for the rebalancing vehicles. Then I use the regular form of uh, to get the traffic assignment to, to get the static traffic assignment based on Dagnan's formulation for user equilibrium. So the objective function is the summation of the integration of all link performance function for all links. So this is this uh, this objective does not have strict, very direct or uh, physical meaning, but it is equivalent to getting the traffic assignment under the user equilibrium. And the first constraint is relates the test flow to the link flow. So the link flow x equals to the old the submission for all pass flow uh, passing through this link. And the total flow from R to S is the submission of total pass flow from R to S. And these two constraints represent, uh, represent uh, the flow conservation as nodes. And the last one is the non-negativity for the pass flow. So when the static using equilibrium is reached, we have this complementarity rule. So either the left-hand side is zero or the right-hand side is zero. If the right-hand side is zero, that means for this pass pi, the pass travel time equals to the shortest pass travel time. Otherwise, the pass flow is zero. So it means all used paths have minimum and equal travel cost. And then we derive the linear rebalancing strategy the objective is to minimize total uh, rebalancing cost because the cost for uh, cost of serving trip here is fixed, and the constraint is for uh, keep the flow conservation at the node. And here is the solution algorithm for static traffic assignment. So this is the standard solution algorithm for st static traffic assignment. So first we we know the traffic demand and the link performance function. And then we initialize the link flow by assigning zeros to them. 
and then we update the link travel time by using the link performance function. And then we find the shortest path based on the calculated link travel times and calculate the total flow and rebalancing flow connecting to all the uh, connecting two nodes. And the next step, we will move vehicles with passenger and rebalancing vehicles. We will shift the flow, cash flow, from the current shortest path, but we are not shifting all flow to the shortest path. We only shift part of the flow to the shortest path. And then we update the link flow again. We will check the model if the model is converged. If it's converged, we will stop the model. Otherwise, we will go back to step two. So the static traffic second model has a large problem because it cannot model Q's feedback and variation in travel time. Because every link, we have a link performance function. So when here, with respect to the link flow, when the link flow is really large, we can still get a really large value for the link travel time using the link performance function. But this is not realistic. When the link flow is really large, the queue in the current link will extend to the upstream link. So this link will be blocked. Uh, vehicles from upstream link cannot enter the current link, uh, which creates the grid lock of the network. So in dynamic traffic assignment, we use a different traffic flow model. And because, of the, because we use the other traffic flow model, so we can't directly formulate the traffic assignment problem using the mathematical program here. But we borrow the linear rebalancing policy from static traffic assignment. We add time index to the variables in the previous linear rebalancing strategy. So currently, we are op optimizing the total cost for the rebalancing trips uh, at the current time step. The constraint also still follow the conservation law of of the flow at every node. And when the dynamic user equilibrium is reached, we can see that either the left-hand side is zero or the right-hand side is zero. So when the right-hand side is zero, the link, the past travel time T, whose departure time is T, needs to be equal to the shortest past travel time. Otherwise, this path has zero flow. It says all paths connecting the origin destination pair with the same departure time, they need to have the same travel time. Otherwise, that path flow is zero. So, so don't be scared by the algorithm. So I will simply explain that. Because in, for the algorithm of dynamic traffic assignment, we do not directly find all paths connecting the same origin destination pair at, the, at once. We iteratively adding paths to the path set connecting the same OD pair. So every time we find a shortest path and that path is not in the path list, we will add them to the path list and update the probability of this path to be picked by vehicles. Okay, we come to the simulation. So we have a simulator. We coded it in Java. And this simulator has several components. So vehicle, the vehicle in this simulator, they will complete, complete rebalancing and serving trips. It will pick a path from the path set. And when, once the vehicle finishes setting the path, it will depart. And zone, zone is the origin for every vehicle. So zone will update, update the number of waiting travelers. And it will keep recording the rebalancing trip have not been finished. For example, if it needs a rebalancing trip, but there is no vehicle arrived yet, it will record this rebalancing trip. And the most important is the center controller. It will collect demand requests in the next five minutes interval and calculate the number of rebalancing trips. It will send the test for rebalancing trips to the zones, and the zone will record how many rebalancing chips needed for this zone. And for every road, it will update its travel time. So the travel time is used to find the shortest path in every time interval. 
So that's our simulator. So you may confused about how does vehicle uh, go from this end of the link to the other end of the link. Here, we don't use the microscopic simulator because that simulator requires a lot of calibration and it will be very slow to build a microscopic simulator for a very large, especially a city-wide network. So we use a macros macroscopic model called cell transmission model to represent the flow propagation. Cell transmission model was proposed by the Ganso in 1992. So here is an example. This link, you can see there are several cells. Each cell includes several vehicles in it. When a vehicle first enters the link, it will first enter cell seven, then it will propagate to cell six, five, four, three, two, one. So cell one is the last cell before the vehicle leaves the link. And how to update the cell occupancy? We use this equation. So the number of vehicles as in cell I as next time step equals to the number of vehicles at cell I at current time step plus the number of vehicles entering the cell minus the number of vehicles exiting the cell. And why? The intercell flow calculation is like this. It's the minimum between the current number of vehicles in the current cell in the upstream cell. And the second term is the maximum number of vehicles that can transmit it from one cell to the next. The third term, you can regard it as the remaining space in the downstream cell. So all parameters in the cell transmission model are from a trapezoidal fundamental diagram. So in this trapezoidal fundamental diagram, there are four parameters, Q, capacity, VF, the free flow speed, the shockwave speed, W, and the jam density, KJ. So when the K increases from zero to KJ, you can find that when K is small, the flow is linearly increasing with the density. When the density is moderate, the flow keeps constant as capacity. When the density increases further, you can see the flow decreases. So this is one kind of the fundamental diagram used in cell transmission model. Okay, that's our simulator. So our simulation is not a one-shot simulation. So in one-shot simulation, we only run the simulation one time. So the route choice of vehicle as the current time step it will refer to the travel time information in previous time step. For example, in one shot simulation, if there's a vehicle departs at 10, 10 a.m., it will re refer to the travel time uh, as 10 a.m. in the same simulation. And this simulation uses iterative solution procedure. It will do multiple iterations. So the route choice of vehicle at a later iteration is referred from the same time, the travel time at the same time in a previous iteration. For example, if there's vehicle depart at 10, 10 a.m. at iteration three, it will refer to the travel time information at 10, 10 at iteration two. So after we do multiple iterations, the, big, uh, the models will converge, which leads to the state condition of the traffic on the road. And to test the algorithm, we use two networks. One is UFO networks. Uh, the, the second is downtown Austin network. Uh, when we do this paper, we only have these two uh, networks. So we use these two networks. Downtown Austin network is much larger than UFO network uh, regarding the zone number, intersection number, and link numbers. And the experiment has two parts. In the first part, we do sensitivity analysis of bleed size. We keep increasing the bleed size, which is the total number of serving vehicles in the system, to see their effect to the service of the mobility on demand system. And in the second experiment, we compare the traffic excitement of a network with mobility on demand system with the baseline scenario. What is the baseline scenario? In the baseline scenario, all demand in the network is served by personal vehicles, 
we assume that every traveler has a personal vehicle, so they can depart whenever they want. So in the baseline scenario, travelers do not have waste time because they directly depart. Okay, during the simulation, we collect this kind of evaluation metrics. For travelers, there are average delay, average in vehicle travel time, and average total travel time. And for vehicle, we calculate average empty travel distance and average total travel distance. And average empty travel distance corresponds to the rebalancing trips in the network. And for the entire network, we collect the total system travel time and shortest path travel time. When a vehicle finishes a trip, we will record its experience the travel time. At the same time, we will also record its the shortest path travel time at the moment. So when the total system travel time and shortest path travel time are very close to each other, then we know the model converges, then we can stop the simulation. Here's the result. So at first, uh, we can see this is sensitivity analysis for the SUFO network. We can see when the fleet size is increasing, the average delay decrease, decreases because when the supply of the system increases, the waiting time of the system decreases. And the average in vehicle travel time increases. That's because when the fleet size increases, there are more vehicles running on the network at the same time. So the network becomes more congested, which leads to the increase in the average in vehicle travel time. And average total travel time is average, total, average in vehicle travel time plus the average delay. So we can find the average total travel time first decrease, then it becomes constant at a value. Because when the delay free size, when the free size is small, the average delay is very sensitive to the free size. So it's decreased a lot. But when the free size uh, becomes larger, it's not that sensitive to the free size. So the average total travel time will become a constant. So for policymakers, this indicates that there might be a value for the best of free size. When, when as using the best of free size, you can use a free size to you to get the best total travel time for the network. And then let's look at the effect of free size to the travel distance for every vehicles. And when the free size increases, travel distance for vehicle decreases, and the rebalancing trips also decreases. So the empty travel distance also decreases. And now we look at the sensitivity analysis for the Austin network. We test the Austin network under two demands. One demand is 51,000 trips. One demand is 32,000 trips. And for for the first demand, for both demand, we can see they show similar trend. So when the free size increases, the average delay first decreases with a large slope, then decreases with a small slope. And the average in vehicle travel time increases a little bit. So the average total travel time first decreases a lot, then decreases a little bit. So you can see that compared with Austin network and the SUFO network, the average in vehicle travel time increase smaller than what happened in SUFO network. Because compared to the large Austin network, this increase in the free size does not necessarily create, a, uh, create the increase of the traffic congestion. And for the travel distance, when the free size increases, we can see the average distance and average empty distance also decreases. Okay, that's the sensitivity analysis. Can okay. I ask a question? Okay, sure. Where did the 51,000 and the 32,000 come from? Or the, uh, is that based on current trips in the... Yeah, that's based on the survey because when we import the network, for example, the Austin network, we have several files. One file for node, one file for link, one file for demand. So the demand file will tell you at this moment how many vehicles will want to depart from this node to the destination. And the demand file was prepared 
by a survey in 2010, according to the some consulting agency. So it's prepared by them. That's the actual trips. That yeah, actual trips. That yeah, and that network is actually it's a small region of the Austin network. So the the UT Austin network is nearby. So we already have that network because my advisor has that network. So we directly use that one. Yeah. Okay, now is a comparison between the network with mobility on demand system and the network with all personal vehicles. We can find that if a network with mobility on demand system, its traffic is more symmetrically distributed, we can look the right upper hand, a right upper corner of the network. So these two roads are two one-way roads. In the first figure, they show similar uh, traffic volume, but in the second figure, their traffic volumes are totally different. So we can conclude that the, with the mobility on demand system, the traffic flow are more symmetrically distributed because we have the conservation law as known. And here is what we uh, really care about. We explore how the rebalancing shift on the road effect in vehicle travel time to show its effect on the traffic congestion. So we can see no matter what value for fleet size we use, the average in vehicle travel time with the mobility system is always smaller than the average in vehicle travel time with personal vehicles. So that's because no matter how large the fleet size you use, the fleet size is always smaller than the actual demand. So the, the number of vehicles running actually running on the road is smaller than if we all use personal vehicles. But in this case, we need to sacrifice the waiting time of uh, travelers because travelers need to wait until there's a vehicle uh, come to pick them and produce the trip. So these two curves, the x-axis is the time and the y-axis is the total volume. We can see that for personal vehicle network, the demand check, demand peak is at time step seven. But when the network has mobility and demand system, the peak shift from time step seven to time step about 14. So that sacrifice the waiting time of the uh, of travelers. They need to wait longer to not produce cheap on the road. Okay, here's the conclusion. And this study models a network whose demand is served by a mobility on demand system. And we formulate static traffic assignment and dynamic traffic assignment of mobility on demand system with rebalancing shifts. And we also propose a linear rebalancing uh, policy. And this study showed that an increase in the three size improved the efficiency of the system. And Mobility on demand system can bring traffic in both directions because it produces rebalancing trips. And compared with a network with only personal vehicles, the network with a mobility on demand system has similar link travel times, or we can say has a little smaller link travel times. So the conclusion is with a mobility on demand system, it does not actually uh, make the congestion more severe. So the future work, because we first uh, do this project and hope for future work, but later I changed my research topic. So as this paper is published uh, like one year ago, so some of this problem may have been served, solved by other studies. So I will still say, it. so to include this work, we can use generalized travel costs instead of only using the travel time. And we can also allow ride sharing in this network, which makes the network more com uh, complicated. And we can include multiple traffic modes, for example, the transit, the bicycle, or other uh, personal vehicle. We can integrate personal vehicle and mobility on demand system in the same network. And we can try other city ne network, for example, the New York city network or the downtown Minneapolis Twin Cities Network. Okay, that's my presentation. Thanks for your attention.
actually have. Mm -hmm. yeah. So uh, I have two questions. The first is, uh, how would you simulate the base case scenario? Base class in terms yeah. of optimization. Yeah. It's also agent is base simulation. So the difference between that is when uh, when when the arrival time of a traveler. Um, so when it reached the arrival time of the traveler, this traveler will directly, for simulator, will generate a vehicle for him. He will directly get in the vehicle, go to the destination, and then this traveler will disappear from the network. So there's no yeah. rebalancing. No rebalancing for that network with all personal vehicles. Okay. So yeah. the next question just said, uh, I will assume the fleet size, in reality, the fleet yeah, size yeah. would be related to the demand. Yes, if you that's have true. Larger demand, you would want more vehicles. Yes. yes. So, how, like, a, have you any tested any sensitivities in terms of different demand? Because we see two examples. Uh, yeah, we only tested two demand for the UT, uh, the downtown Austin. And also, uh, in terms of yeah. demand, uh, it's fixed, right? Yeah, because uh, if we try different, we can try that, I think. I think. Our linear rebalancing policy is not perfect because it's not perfect because it will push to produce more rebalancing chips as it needs. So, if we test more demand, I think the fleet size needs to increase further. Okay, so we can do that. I think. So your like, a, I, my guess is with yeah. higher demand, the required fleet size will be higher. Yeah, something like that. Yeah, but that demand is already already one hundred percent of the demand for that area. So if we do sensitivity analysis, I think we we can time one hundred and ten percent to those values. Yeah. Thank you. I'm gonna prefer the next question. We forgot a little formality, which is we need a picture with the chat. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh. No, no. I'm oh. <laughs> 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 so you don't project your image. Well, Continue with questions as long as you feel like it. Thank you very much. Thanks for helping. Thank you. How did you treat our future network future? How did you treat the input and output or at the external uh, outer edge? Outer uh, edges? Because in the real world, many people want to go out for something. From other cities. Oh, you mean a uh, demand? Oh, you mean the demand is outside of the network. Outside of the network. How did you treat the boundary condition? Okay, because this study uh, directly deal with the traffic assignment. So we assume we have finished the first step in the four step mass. We already know the demand value. Demand so, from, from the yeah. external source yeah. as a demand user. From every centroid. Yeah. Um, we know where is the demand go from and where it will go go to. So we yeah. So, so the demand is already already yeah. Yeah. already calculated. If you choose the use yeah. yeah. But if the autonomous vehicle go outside, yeah. the total bridge side on uh, fleet, fleet side, uh, vehicle in the mobility from demand system, when they finish the service, uh, uh, service, they will stay at a point waiting here or they will go to other places. Traveler will, travelers will disappear, but uh, vehicles will not disappear. They will always inside of Um, so, your question. Yeah. Uh, so I think you explained why it's so hard. Why you choose balls rather than uh, so you mean why I choose Austin not Silver for comparing two scenarios? Well, I so. Yeah. Yeah, I guess. Okay. Why? Why you choose both? Like how? Did you, uh, 
uh, how I choose the test network. Yeah, uh, because preparing the test network is not easy. So there's a website including all test network that network usually used in the area of network modeling because as we already have a very accurate network that is the down Austin network. So we directly use that. We think using network can produce the most accurate sensitivity analysis or give us the most accurate result. So if we have now we are preparing the Twin Cities network in Minneapolis at St. Paul. So after that network is finished, we can apply our efforts on that large network. Here. Thank you. So I was wondering, like, uh, what was the critical density uh, on the intercell simulation? Um, we use trapezoidal fundamental yeah, networks, so there will be two values of them. And uh, yeah, so we have a file including the link. So that link file has parameters regarding every link. So the fundamental diagram for every link is different. So every link has its own fundamental diagram. That's prepared in advance. We are sure you use uh, also must be for this model, right? Oh, what's that? We assume that yeah. you so the MOD will use we rely on autonomous vehicle. Yeah, the critical density will yeah. be much higher than the current yeah. actual condition. Yes, that's true. Then in this in this uh, study, we focus on the application of autonomous vehicle can rebalance itself. So we did not calibrate the trapezoidal fundamental diagram based on the characteristic like the mechanism of the uh, of the autonomous vehicle. So that's need another study for that. Yeah. Uh, I'm wondering about the uh, simulation of the intersection at the beginning and yeah. that might integrate with what you mentioned at the end. Yes, yes. If you have Pedestrians. Yes. It, it looked like an urban intersection, and, uh, yes, and, yes. and also, if you have any thoughts of how um, the mobility on demand might integrate with, say, pedestrian trips. Mm -hmm. So, at first, in this study, we do not consider pedestrians. So, we consider a network full of vehicles, full of autonomous vehicles. And as you mentioned, how do we implement the intersection control? Uh, in this simulator, our intersection control algorithm is we use a macroscopic version of autonomous intersection management for autonomous uh, vehicles. So that's a macroscopic version of autonomous intersection management. That algorithm is published in, my, in one paper of my advisor, Michael Lab. So in PR, so if you need, I can give you the copy. Uh, no, I, thank you. No, yes. Does this answer your question? Uh, yes. Okay. Thank you. Uh, I was also like wondering like if you incorporated like unforeseen consequences such as like weather conditions or uh, yes. uh, like accidents. Yes, yes. Yeah, I think that will be a really interesting topic. Like, if the if there's an accident happen or this road is broken, how do we go route use other route to reach the destination? But I think this study, I think, is the first step for us to model, uh, build a macroscopic model for mobility on demand system. So, your idea can be the future work for this study. <laughs> <laughs> so other other idea for you just study might yeah. be using a uh, MP. Yeah. So you, you mentioned about MP3, uh, the travel distance, travel yes, time. Yes. But it might be useful if those empty vehicles can bring some free from one place to another. Even yeah. even if there is a unbalanced situation of people's flow. Yeah. So 
it does not necessarily mean the free pronouncing is not. Yeah, it, it uh, free is free is unbalanced. So that yeah, you you may use kind of uh, package delivery model integrated. So yeah, you mean the rebalancing uh, policy is not that uh, realistic. I think no, you can yeah. use the empty car to empty car carry too. some freight, some goods, or to do the delivery. Not the passenger. So that yeah. you don't waste the empty trips. That's yeah, yeah, that's good. Then, to do simulation in this kind of research, I think we may need another demand file for yeah, to say how many demands, goods yes. are needed. Yeah, I think, I think that's a good, really good idea yeah, for freight, freight transportation. On your charts, um, the time value is dropping as the fleet goes from very low to your category. Why is that? Uh, where is the? There. Here. There. Sure. Mm -hmm. Left. Left chart. Yeah. Blue line. Yeah. So what's the? Do you mean the in-vehicle travel time increases? Why does the, let's see, it's the, is it, it's, is it the average delay, the blue line? Uh, yeah, yes, yes. Going from 1,200 down to yes. 600 as it goes from less than 4,000 to 6,000. Mm -hmm. why, why is that descending at less than 4,000? Why is it descending less than 4,000? So as we add more vehicle in the network, I think that the departing, uh, rebalancing distance for the vehicle is shorter. So vehicle can travel shorter distance to reach the traveler at its origin. So traveler only need to wait for a short time before it departs. So that's why the delay decreases. Yeah. Okay, so I was yeah. thinking beyond the autonomous vehicle. Oh, beyond that. Yeah, so, okay, yeah. thank you. Okay, thank you. to serve the last mile problem for the transit. So when the vehicle, when the passenger get off the transit, they can directly use the mobility on demand system to reach their destination. But that distance may be only one or two miles, which save the time for travelers. I think that's a really good, uh, uh, good idea. But in this study, we think it's simpler. So we think traveler can directly walk to the station to use the autonomous vehicle. But these stations are closely distributed. So that's our design in, in our network. Thank you for your idea. Is there a way to incorporate the type of infrastructure that yeah. it, within the network, such as good sidewalks and mm -hmm. safe bicycle ways and yes. frequent transit? Yes, I think uh, I think some demand can be solved, can be served by adding bicycle. For example, we integrate mobility on demand system for both vehicles and for both bicycles. Both of them can solve, can serve part of the demand or the total demand. And if we want to use bicycles, at the intersection, I think we need to do some updates about the intersection control algorithm. We need to design some phase to let the bicycle cross the street, across the intersection. So we need to do some updation, update to the simulator and do some update to the demand, demand file. Yeah, I think that's a good, really good idea for, for the future work. Thank you. Or 
last question. <laughs> so, what, what is the recommendation of case study by the city officials? Uh, sorry, sorry. So, what is the recommendation from your study to the city officials? To the officials? Yeah, like to, to traffic city. managers? Yeah, traffic managers. Security. So, one idea is that they do not need to increase in the fleet size to a very large number. So, they can find, they can aim to find an optimal fleet size. So the optimal fleet size can reach the minimum total travel time of the, of the users. So that's one idea. And the other one idea is that when they want to serve the demand of a network all by the mobility on demand system, they need to consider if the travelers are happy about that. Because if they want to reduce the congestion in the network in morning peak hour, then they Get, they replace all personal vehicles with the mobility on demand system. Then, because this needs to sacrifice the waiting time for travelers, some most people were not happy about that if they have a long travel time. So that's uh, that's the. I think that may help the traffic manager to do the right decision, but. I think it won't happen until decades, years, 20 or 30 years later. Yeah. All right, um, let's thank the speaker again for this great talk. Feel free to stay longer if you have any questions to ask. Thank you. Your your something. <laughs> <laughs>